Welcome to the second episode of Project Origin's Coffee Journey, where we will explore the coffee tree in a little more detail. My name is Habib Marbani. I'm the General Manager of Project Origin, and I've been involved in the specialty coffee industry since 2003. Today, we're talking about coffee tree varieties and species. Let's start with the question, are there different varieties of coffee trees? The short answer is yes, there are many. The longer answer is that this topic is super complicated and some details remain disputed or unknown. Starting at the beginning, the coffee tree belongs to the botanical flowering family of plants called Rubia Kai. There are many genera within this family, one of which is Coffea, what we call coffee. The Coffea genus has over 120 species. One of those is Arabica. Other species include Canephra, Liberica, Euhenoides and Racemosa. Caffea is the genus, Arabica is a species, and there are dozens of varieties of Arabica coffees within that species. The species that are typically grown commercially are Arabica and Canephora. Robusta is one variety of the Canephora species, though often the word Robusta is used as another name for the Canephora species itself. What's the difference between Arabica and Robusta? Robusta is highly cultivated due to its resistance to diseases like leaf rust, parasites and high temperatures. In general, it can grow in more challenging weather and soil conditions. It's more robust. Robusta also thrives at low altitudes up to 1200 meters and it's more productive overall. It's also high in caffeine, which makes it taste quite bitter and it's one reason bugs don't like eating it. It's nature's own pesticide. Aside from bitterness, it is more full-bodied, less acidic, and less aromatic than Arabica. Arabica is also one of the most commercialized in the world. It is more susceptible to disease and survives better at higher altitudes, 900 meters or more. The higher altitude helps Arabica to develop higher sweetness, more nuanced flavors like fruit and florals as well. Arabica also has half the caffeine content, so it's less bitter than Robusta but this sweetness means bugs enjoy eating the coffee cherries too. When grown at higher altitude though, the colder temperatures become the natural barrier to keep bugs away. Arabica forms the foundation of the specialty coffee industry and it's prized for its flavor attributes. Arabica varieties that we see a lot are Tipica, Bourbon, Katura, Katwai, Gesha, Java, and Pacamara. Even though they are all Arabicas, they are all incredibly different in coffee flavor and in the appearance of the trees themselves. What about wild mutations and creating hybrids? Creating hybrids between Robusta and Arabica is something that's been done globally for decades, resulting in new varieties that combine attributes from both. One of the most influential is Hybrido de Timor, known as HDT or the Timor hybrid. This is the only known hybrid that occurred between two different species in the wild Arabica and Canephora. Two species mixing like this is incredibly rare and may never happen again. The Timor hybrid has been used in labs in a range of countries around the world to create other varieties, including Katimor, Colombia, Sachimor, and Lempira. Hybrids give producers options to select varieties that suit their changing conditions rather than just growing what has always been grown. Hybrids are created in a lab for very specific reasons. Usually they have coffee trees that are disease or pest resistant, highly productive, and still taste great. They're different to mutations that occur naturally in the wild. The variety Katura, for example, is a wild mutation of Bourbon. It was discovered in the early 1900s in Brazil and grows smaller than Bourbon, but it's more productive too. But nature did that all by herself, and there are many other examples of wild mutations. Why do producers grow certain varieties? There are different reasons why coffee varieties are chosen. Sometimes the variety isn't chosen at all. Many farms have existed for many generations and the trees are never changed. So farmers simply work the trees that were planted by their grandparents or their great grandparents. This is especially true for small holder producers because cutting down some trees to replace them with another variety means losing some of their crop and income for about three or four years until the new trees begin to produce. But where a producer can make a choice, they would usually decide the variety based on their growing conditions and the variety that will thrive in those conditions. 
to produce good volume, good cup quality, and not be too susceptible to pests or disease. To a coffee roaster, the interest in different coffee varieties is usually based on the flavour profile, the cup quality or the price. That's where it's important to find common ground between what works for producers and what works for roasters, so the coffee industry as a whole can continue to thrive. Thanks for joining us in this episode of The Coffee Journey. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram so you can stay up to date.